just drop the keys back for the hotel room and we are on our way so weather conditions today check the forecast not expecting rain just expecting it to be overcast oh it's just to go back that way um, well I can feel a slight drizzle going down at the moment uh, but there's a yeah but there's a um, easterly wind blowing today I'm going to need to just pull over quickly my uh, my phone has its tilt lock taken off so now it wants to show me a map in landscape orientation oh there we go so I'm going to turn that back on alright still good alright Yeah, so easterly, fairly mild one. I think it's only five kilometres per hour or something, but that will give us some good riding conditions. It's 14 and a half degrees Celsius this morning, and I've set off at about quarter past eight. Uh, fueling strategy for today is to, even though I've got almost a fuel tank, full tank, I will top up at Coolgardie, which will then replicate the fuel strategy I used coming across and uh, it'll be more effective because of the slight tailwind which will see me fueling up once at Meriden after that. A uh, total of 589 kilometres today it was going to be 555 uh, but I'm in Kalgoorlie uh, because of the uh, fueling crisis yesterday which actually turned out pretty well turned out for the better um, had crazy fun trying to get uh, content uploaded last night uh, the laptop my son's old school laptop it's it's busted like it's cracked screen it's uh, been with a high school kid basically for um, for three years prior so you can imagine what it's like um, it finally decided that it didn't want to have a network card, a, a Wi-Fi wireless network, so it wouldn't even pick one up. So I had to tether it, which I haven't done before, as in use, u USB cable tethered to my Android phone. Um, which uh, kind of worked, kind of. So I did a speed test on the local Wi-Fi, and it was appreciably quick, like 5 meg uploads. Um, tethered through my phone, it took all night, it took roughly 12 hours to upload uh, a 1.5 gig file, and 60% of another 1.5 gig, so whatever that is. Well, let's just say it's 2.25 to round it. But when I looked at data that uh, had been logged on the connection, it was 44 gigabytes. I just couldn't believe it. 44 gig to upload 2.25. So again, my IT buddies, what's going on there? That's just, that's nonsense. Anyhow, so um, I've got, I've got one, uh, video waiting in the wings I'll um, I'll get onto that when I get home I'll have to uh, go old school oh, check that out there's a bloody Valiant in there awesome um, yeah so that's waiting in the wings I'll get onto that when I get home with a bloody Ethernet cable that should work and uh, and then I'll finish processing this content today uh, reflections of the last 
24 hours. It's a really good day yesterday, um, notwithstanding the issues I had at uh, Widgie Malta. Thank you, Widgie Malta. It was it was great. I like getting rained on. Um, I liked having a hotel room to do the uh, processing of content. And uh, I'm really thinking about today. So, my thoughts about today are really about thinking about the journey. It's very, very tempting when you're on your last leg until you get home to just think about getting home and being home. Um, as much as I want to be home, I, I looked up the statistics as I did my journey management plan this morning. Um, stats on crashes uh, close to home are pretty astonishing. 69% uh, of all motor vehicle accidents happen within 15 kilometres of your house. So, um, yeah, so my mindset today is going to be to just enjoy today, enjoy the ride. It's only a short ride, comparatively short. It's still almost 600 kilometres, so let's not kid ourselves. Um, Enjoy the ride, stay focused on the journey, not on the destination. Um, and repeat everything that has worked for me for this entire trip. So, um, I suppose in closing this morning, so we can, I suppose, get some of the formalities out of the way. Um, I would just summarise the trip as being pretty epic. Um, it was interrupted by COVID, but that's that's all good. Uh, east to west is the best way. I didn't overpack and I didn't underpack, uh, with exception of the stool, which found its way uh, into a donation bin at Mum's house. She'll use it because she's an avid camper. Uh, what I would like to do though is just thank everyone that's helped me uh, for this trip. So shout out to my lovely wife Claire. She's been holding the fort at home while I gallivant off around the country. Uh, I know she's been worried about what could possibly happen. Um, so thank you Claire. Big shout out also to my family over east in Brisbane. Uh, brother and sister and mum, thanks very much for having me. It was great to see you after two years. Glad you're enjoying the content. Okay, so that's all for commentary today. Fuel at Kilgardie, fuel at Meriden, then home. Focus on the journey. Signing out. Well, sit rep, I'm here at Kilgardie. I've just uh, topped up the tank, six litres from Camp Boulder. And I've decided to, uh, to have my breakfast of champions. I found a a vibe service station. Yep. They got they got cheese Kranskis. They had chili Kranskis too. But cheese is the way to go. And a uh, not endorsing this particular product. But that is the breakfast of champions. Got a little lighter as we went, but all in all, going light is the way to go. So on the tank bag, if you'll recall, the bottom tank bag has a little bit of camera gear, so a tripod and a selfie stick, and uh, two litres of fuel plus a litre of oil, and the top. Uh, tank bag 
have my masks, my COVID tests. Uh, there's a back brace in there in case I needed it, which I didn't. Um, my wallet and just things to that need to be handy. And on the tail pack was the mattress, inflatable mattress, which uh, was a not not inflated with a pump, just by blowing it up yourself. Um, roughly 80 breaths. Who's counting? But didn't take much to blow it up. And uh, inflatable pillows, hand inflated little um, included pump uh, to inflate those, and the tent on the back. Uh, di ditched the chair. The sleeping bag was on the back, uh, but I ended up being able to uh, put it in the backpack. Um, by removing shoes. I brought shoes across from Perth and, uh, and when I flew back to get the bike I decided just to bring some thongs. So that's all I had there. Um, but that's it really until I get back on the road again and go to enjoy my Kranskis. Probably the last Kranskis I'll have for a long time. Um, unless uh, we get away at Easter. I'll hunt some down then. But, uh, sign out. Alright folks. Not far out of, uh, not far out from Kulgadi at the moment. I turned the camera on because I thought you might want to see a proper road train. This is a proper one. I'm going to overtake him when I can. Oh, he's turning off. Oh, well, that's good. I don't have to overtake. Oh, no, he's not turning off. But check this out. That's four. Impressive. The road gets rough, I like to practice my singing, okay. Deep river, I am mighty Jordan. All right, have just passed through the town of Southern Cross. I think we can safely say we're out of the Yilgarn Craton, the mining province. We're entering Wheat Belt. Uh, this pipe we can see to the right here. That services Kalgoorlie and surrounds. So, uh, so it, it pumps literally 500, 500 plus kilometres from uh, some of the reservoirs near Perth. From the Mundaring Weir. Definitely weak on. Seen some farms over here. Yes, yeah, so the riding conditions were off the uh, off the bumpy road now, which is good. Things are smoothed out nicely. Um, things are starting to warm up. It's been pretty chilly. Uh, it's only just ticked up to 17 degrees Celsius, and I'm just wearing my summer summer weight gear. sun's out now, we've had a lot of uh, overcast sky till now. And Meriden's about an hour away, which is the first and last fuel stop. I'll grab uh, a warm drink there. And uh, it's a time, 11 o'clock. It'll be lunchtime, maybe a quick bite to eat. Alrighty, signing off. Alright, I'll be arriving in Meriden soon. But I just thought I'd share this. Um, beautiful weather. Open road. It's a slight tailwind, so 110 kilometres an hour. There's no problems at all. Uh, I'm heading home.
lassen wir immer schwerer. Okay. <coughs> Well, that was the stop at Meriden. Got some juice and some food. Some Rosie's chicken. The tastiest chicken in town. So, mileage left to go is 256. Two and a half hours. It's 12.17 And it's still a bit chilly, although this says 20 degrees like, Again, I think my bike's influenced the sensor I felt the tailwinds picked up a bit, which is nice So I'll lock in 109 kilometers per hour again Jeez. Yeah, we'll be back before we know it. Thriving little town. Okay, we've got uh, roughly 30 minutes before home. But I thought I'd take a little bit of Great Eastern Highway as we start rolling to the Perth Hills. It's a really pretty part of the world. You kept all the kind of native vegetation and forests intact. You just cut the highway through. There's a national park off to our right. Some burning off today, I can see a bit of haze in the sky and smell it. Either that or my bike's on fire. Alright, I'll turn you off and catch you closer to home. Okay, we're about to head down the escarpment. So uh, you'll descend from the Perth Hills down to the Swan Coastal Plain on which Perth sits. get a pretty good view from up here just over the crest of this hill and down we go Unfortunately, it's a bit hazy today.
can smell rubber and brakes. There we go. Give you a view. You can see you won't be able to see with this uh, GoPro. But trust me, Perth City. Just poking through the haze. Maybe you could see that. Maybe you can't. Alright, signing off. Alright, this is our last five minutes. cover the last uh, six kilometers so this is my neighborhood the suburbs called the vines it's in the Swan Valley Western Australia traffic on the roads because it's uh, school pickup time. And that's also why I've been super careful. some numbers shall we right so the trip average fuel consumption was 5.40 liters per hundred kilometers that's indicated so add 0.54 to that so it'll be 5.94 for the 10% speedo yeah. Let's say six, six liters to the hundred. Average speed, 91.5 kilometers per hour for the return. going to uh, take some video footage of um, the dogs greeting me. Claire was telling me that, well, when I asked Claire she said that the, uh, my dog Jake um, really missed me again, sitting by the gate waiting for me to come home. less than a kilometre to home so total distance 9,159 kilometres she's due for an oil change I think in actual fact the service intervals are ridiculously long 15,000 or something. <laughs> All right, this is my street. Don't crash here, mate. <laughs> I 
and I made it. 9,159. Yeah, the dogs will hear the gate opening for sure. We're inside the house. <laughs> Driveway needs a clean. I can hear dogs already. Hello. 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 Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness. Oh. Hello. Who are you? Who are you? Hello. 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 Oh, hello. And without any ceremony, he's off on the hunt for some birds. Oh, well, folks, that's it. I'm back I made it gonna go and get these clothes off have a shower and start unpacking hello Jake hello Jake how are you oh how are you coming oh what's that what's that smell what's that smell oh, what's that smell oh my goodness me oh my goodness me 